Welcome to Storybrook. Once upon a time. It's like I woke up in some strange land. Once upon a time. It's entirely possible to get lost here. Once upon a time. It's time villains finally win. Once, Once upon, upon a time. time. True love proved more powerful than any curse. Once upon a time. Just because you believe something doesn't make it true. That's exactly what makes it true. I remember way back in casting, I was 10, and uh, I've grown up a lot since then, clearly. I got a phone call one day when I was walking my dog with um, a bag of poo in my hand. My agent called and said, would you like to be on Once Upon a Time? And I said, oh my god, yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, please. I always sort of dreamed of becoming a Disney character. And so when I was cast as Princess Tiana, my, my seven-year-old dreams finally came true. I was in the car just coming home from school again, and my agent said, hey, you booked it. I went, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. I was completely freaked out. I was like, I finally get to meet the people I've, I've watched grow up like Henry. I remember in, in testing after the first few auditions, I saw Lana in the room and she looked at me, she leaned in close and I was terrified because I mean, she's Lana. I was tanning, she was all in her evil queen persona and she said, you're gonna be my son. The queen may be evil, but I'm wicked. And wicked always wins. My whole life changed, and not just the job or the blessings that come with that, but being accepted into this massive fandom has completely and utterly changed my life. I feel like I have this extended family now. The first day that I walked on set, it was just like this wonderful family and the camaraderie, the friendship, just the love and enthusiasm for each other and the show was just so palpable in the air the minute that you stepped on set. What's the name of this place? Storybrook. I think at the end of the day, people have really just formed a bond with these characters and the actors who play them, and they just like to be in Storybrook every week. It's a welcoming place. For some reason, you're so much more likable here in Storybrook. One of our goals with the show was to create something that was unabashedly optimistic, that wasn't cynical, that was hopeful. And I think that that may have something to do with the fans who have stayed around for so long. The show was one that was always about positivity. Looks like fairy tales to me. And what exactly do you think fairy tales are? They are a reminder that our lives will get better if we just hold on to hope. Once Upon a Time, it is an emotional experience, not only for us, but for you, the fans. And mm. the idea that hope is possible for all of us, that a second chance is possible for all of us, is not only a wonderful thing, but an emotional thing. Mm. And to go on this ride that you, the fans, have allowed us to go on for seven years, is an extraordinary thing. To be able to take those characters and make them breathe, put blood in their veins, make people care about them. So these are stories we already know and suddenly you care deeply about these characters who want things you can understand. I think it's just sort of this magic combination. For me, I knew we were onto something amazing, which was the episode about Red Riding Hood called Red Handed. I don't get scripts unless I'm in the episode. I wasn't in that one, but I happened to watch it with Josh Dallas in my hotel room. And the end of that episode, when she turns out to be the wolf, was magical. I'll never forget that moment, as long as I live. Where's Peter? He wasn't the wolf. My jaw hit the floor. And you know, when you can be a fan of a show you're in, while well, you're in for a wild ride. My favorite filming moment on Once Upon a Time would probably be my first day on the show. We had uh, the real ship, uh, the Jolly Roger, which it's called the Lady Washington. And it was this beautiful day in August. The sun was out and, you know, I was working with Robert Carlyle for the first time, who was one of my heroes. And we got to sail out around the sound and through the mountains. And that was the moment that I, I sort of went, oh, wow, this is, this is great. All right, everyone, what's going on? My favorite episode to film has been 722. It's been incredible seeing all the new faces and getting the gang back together for one last hurrah. The pitch for the entire show when I sat down with Eddie and Adam in 2011 was 
What if the evil queen got her happy ending? And now she's getting her happy ending. One of the amazing things about the show in general is that there was always room for it to grow in so many different ways. And um, I think all of us on the show were always pleasantly surprised and excited to see what Eddie and Adam would come up with. We started to see villains turn into heroes. We started to see heroes turn into villains. We started to see kind of everything in between. There was an endless opportunity to be able to try new things and to have all these different worlds and storylines that we got to explore. Suddenly you just look and like, oh, there's Evil Queen and Robin Hood and all of us just playing cards in costumes. That was really fun. <laughs> Casual day on set, <laughs> playing cards with Snow White. <laughs> One moment I remember was Aladdin and Jasmine fighting a Kraken only to be saved by Captain Hook, who was riding on the Nautilus with Captain Nemo, and just watching the production team bring that insane collision of characters and creatures and effects all together. I just said, this is an awesome show I get to work on. I also love the fact that there was this freedom and imagination that you could go anywhere, do anything. I mean, for goodness sake, I mean, I, I skinned puppies, darling. So where are the boundaries after that? You kind of have to be in touch with that, like, nine-year-old inside of yourself. You definitely have to not take yourself too seriously, too. You really unleashed something there. <laughs> I think if I was always worried about the stupidity of some of my ideas sometimes, then I would never pitch anything, and sometimes the craziest things, the craziest ideas that you have about how something works or where the magic comes from or something like that is actually the best one. I'm a fan of true love, dearie. And more importantly, what it creates. I love that we made Captain Hook's daughter, Alice in Wonderland, and then put her together in a romance with the girl Robin Hood, who was the daughter of the Wicked Witch and adult boy Robin Hood. To say all of those things out loud just feels insane, and yet it felt so organic to write those two characters in a relationship. I might not be the best person to ask for dating advice. I kind of ate the only boyfriend I've ever had. Yes, I think that disqualifies you. I got a kick out of Blue Whale, <laughs> only because I said something about Blue Whale on, on Twitter at one point. People were like, oh my god, she ships with Dr. Whale. And I was like, I don't even know what shipping is. Like, I, I had to be completely schooled in the whole matter. Snow White and Prince Charming, because from the beginning, they've been the two that I followed. And I was a fan of the show prior to being on the show, so I'm always going to ship them. I've only seen you go on one date, and that was with a flying monkey. Thought I had to top that. He set the bar pretty high. He proposed that night. He also tried to kill you. Right, there's that. I plead the fifth on shipping. I'd like to live to see tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I can't pick favorites. That's like, I mean, that's like walking to my death. <laughs> Henry and his two moms. You know, we really loved the idea that this was a show about a little boy who needed hope and wanted to reunite his family. And I think at the end of the day, he accomplished that. Seeing the relationship between Henry and Regina over the years of the show was a really special arc to see how far Emma came, how far Regina came, and how Henry grew up. And then seeing Jared literally growing literally up on grew camera up, yeah. was, it was crazy. I mean, he was, I think, 11 when we started. Yeah. And now, you know, he's 47. 40. Yeah, he's 47. <laughs> you know, it's, it's crazy. Yeah. If I was to describe Once Upon a Time in one word, it would be epic. Once Upon a Time is unique. Wicked. Villainous. Memorable. Love. Once upon a time is magical. 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 Magical has been used already, hasn't it? <laughs> love. True love is magic. <laughs> and not just any magic, the most powerful magic of all. I think a happy ending can be about just being at peace with oneself and finding joy and love, not only within, but in the world and the people around you. A long time ago, I told you if people saw you a certain way, you had to punch back and show them who you are. If you see yourself a certain way, punch back and see yourself differently. You can change, you can fix this. Once has grown hugely since season one because the characters have grown mm -hmm. hugely since. And changed and changed yeah. and changed and changed and changed, and as it, people do. Yeah, and it goes through, you know, no one is born completely good, no one is born completely 
evil. Mm -hmm. And, you know, once is about the choices that you make define your character, define who you are. And the so, definitive self is still kind of a mess. Right. So you're always changing, you're always mm -hmm. evolving, and once upon a time shows you that you can do that. You can have a happy ending. There's a real truism to that. It just depends on what that means for you. And that's what's cool about the show, too, is that that, that tends to mean something different for each of the different characters. My favorite episode was episode 22 of season one, because that's when we woke up and we realized we all just had that breath of, oh my God, this is who I am and this is who you are, and we saw each other with different eyes. I love that. This town's just not big enough for the both of us. At last, we agree on something. My favorite episode to film was season six, episode 14. The reason why I love that episode so much is because it was the Evil Queen and Regina standoff. You really believe you're better than me? Stronger than me? It was a moment between them when they were literally at each other's throats. Then there was this beautiful realization that in order to create peace between these two parts of oneself, you have to accept both sides. We have a scene in which adult Henry, played by Andrew J. West, talks to Jared Gilmore, young Henry, on the phone and gives him advice and they help each other. Who'd you say this was again? Just someone who believes in you. Being on a show where it's the same character talking to himself, I mean, that's just really fun hijinks for me um, and crazy stuff that happens on a show like this. An evil queen sent a bunch of fairy tale characters here. Yeah, and now they're trapped. Frozen in time, stuck in Storybrooke, Maine. That's what you're going with? It's true. A magical location for me has always been Steveston, which is Storybrooke. It just, it feels like the home of Once Upon a Time and uh, so much has happened there. Two things that I love most is that we have our own conventions and that we are on the Vancouver Richmond City Tourist Board if you want a storybook tour. Even on those cold rainy days, when you're out there, it really just brings Once Upon a Time to life. There were a couple of nights, I'm not gonna lie, and you're wearing those big skirts. And it's raining. And it's raining, and you do not pick up your skirt because you're an evil queen. You don't, you just drag it through the mud. And then you and get to And it's wicking run. up. So you've got three <laughs> feet of water, two feet of mud. So now your costume weighs 842 pounds. Yeah. You know, and I'm Gandalf, <laughs> and, you know, and it's night. You, you would, your right. body doesn't know why you're doing this. Right, Well, I, but like you could never complain because like the crew would also yeah. bring a second change of clothes because they would be so wet. Like they would just like, all right, and then right. we just keep going. The pilot where we're putting Snow White to sleep and she's in her coffin and Prince Charming comes running in. They wanted snow to come down and at the right moment, the snow did fall. It was real snow. We keep telling all the fans like yourself that yes, the snow is real. There's no CGI there. So thank you all of the filmmaking gods. It was like Narnia and the sky was pitch black, ink black, and then it was contrasted with the white snow and there were these tall trees. And I think I only had like half a line in that episode, but for me, that was wonderful. I loved that, that was so magical. The sets that this crew created were in insanely beautiful. The attic that was Cinderella's room was so on point, but I would say the pumpkin patch from Price of Gold that that was just stunning. It was at this really old manor and everything was real and at night and all the action that was happening. It was, it was enchanted. Storybook is a weird place, but cool. A dwarf being hatched from an egg. I can't imagine that we've done anything weirder, have we? I think dwarf hatched from an egg. You know, I, um, yes, I would also say that going to the pilot, the war room scene. I say we fight! Where you had an assembly of everyone from Pinocchio to Snow White to Blue Red Fairy. Riding Hood yeah. to Blue Fairy. This will work. We all must have faith. All these people around a table. And what was so strange about the scene was that when we conceived it, we wrote it completely straight and serious. 
because that's how we always approached the show and the situations the characters were going through. And we always took them seriously. But then when you get to the set and you see the people in these incredible costumes and this incredible set doing it and playing it so sincerely, it's, you realize just how crazy this idea was. And I remember being on the set that day thinking, this is insane. And I still can't believe seven years later, we're still doing it. <laughs> Take that, Frosty. Well, I was throwing magic at giant snowmen saying, take that, Frosty, or throwing magic at the Ice Queen saying, hey, Dairy Queen. There were always these very kind of um, sarcastic, flippant things that, that Emma would say to these outrageous monsters. There's a 40-foot can of raid when you need it. And I always had to find a way to make that seem real. <laughs> that was always one of my biggest challenges and fears. It was like, am I gonna be able to pull this off? I also remember when we had to go into that Chernabog thing with Rumpelstiltskin, and we all had our moments. Like, I had to whip the tentacle to get the ball and bring the ball back. Uh-huh. And then uh -huh. Vicky had to use her little dragon breath to uh -huh. the dog breath. And you had to <laughs> build the fire. I remember we were all like, did that look cool? Like, was that, does that, you know, because you're like, mm. yeah. and it was like amazing. Like, it all turned out great. But you're like, mm. <laughs> <laughs> acting is embarrassing. Acting is <laughs> The second they go cut, we're like, was that stupid? Did I look stupid? Did I look stupid? And when we're done with it, going to be the new Neverland. A highlight was definitely episode 10 of season three, where I switched bodies with uh, Henry's character. So what happens now? And so I was playing Henry in my own body, and Henry was playing Pan in his own body, and that was, uh, that was a really, really fun way to switch things up, because uh, I'd been playing an evil bastard for so long. All of this is a delusion. Do you know what a delusion is? I, I think so. The thing that made Once Upon a Time I mean, there's so many things that made it great, but but really, the spine of it was always the writing. The writing, the writing, the writing was incredible. And um, they created complex, three-dimensional characters that always surprised you. Care to dance? I really love everything that we've done with Rumpelstiltskin because he gets to be the crocodile yeah. and Captain Hook's story, he gets to be the beast in Beauty and the Beast, and he's just his own sort of badass guy. This isn't you anymore. Oh, it's me, Jerry. Always has been, always will be. He's awesome. He's probably one of the best characters because he encompasses all these different stories. We're staying in Storybrook? Yeah, kid. This is where we belong. This is where our family is. Family means something primal to me. It means, uh, it means a connection. It means uh, understanding. It means acceptance. And it can be uh, something as immediate as, as blood family. But certainly within uh, uh, the acting community, it, it, it extends to our work because the hours are so long and the connections can be so deep because of that. I think family means to me people you can be with who love you regardless of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Maybe it should be the good, the bad, and the koala. Mm. We're a family. Yes, and we always will be. You gave us that. The word family means love, safety, hope. There's the blood family and the family that you're born into, and then there's the family that you choose, and that's your friends and, and loved ones and people you choose to be around. And I think Once Upon a Time does a beautiful job of showing how important both of those families are in life. I've never really had an experience on a television show or a movie where the fans had such a big impact on me and they became really the most important part of the show. To the fans of Once Upon a Time, you are the most extraordinarily loyal, loving, giving, and at sometimes deeply nutty in the best possible way people I've ever met. I've got to meet you out and about. Um, I've got to read your tweets and your Facebook messages and your Instagram messages, and I am so honored and tickled, and I adore you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for loving Cruella. And she says to you, thank you, darlings. Prepared to be skinned to the fans. I'd like to say I've never experienced anything like this before. And uh, 
I, I'm very moved by all the times uh, how deeply involved you are and, and what it means to you. It's a little scary on some level because there's a, a little responsibility for us <laughs> of living up to your expectations, uh, but it's so moving. It's been the most incredible journey of my life. And I really hope that throughout these seven years and every episode that we worked on that you found love and joy and hope in, that it's inspired you. I know that this show has done that for me. And I really hope the magic continues in your life as it will in mine. I think we all understood all along that without you, we were nothing. Without you, the fans, this show wouldn't have been possible. And sorry. <sighs> if I was any more grateful for you, for the fans, I think I might explode. I don't even know where to start with how much I would want to say to the fans of Once Upon a Time. You guys have been absolutely amazing and you've inspired all of us every single day um, we're, we're there doing it for you guys the fact that you guys watch and you enjoy it and that you have built friendships and relationships around the show it means so much to us um, all of the fan art all of the fan fiction all of the things that you guys have created in relation to the show has also completely inspired us to have the experience of being part of the fabric of something like once upon a time where the fans are so passionate, so involved, so open to go on this ride with us is a thrill that I will take. I'm no. <laughs> oh. It's <Sorry>. a thrill. <laughs> it's her fault. It's a thrill that I will take with me forever. And uh, it's, it's a special thing. So thank you. Thank you for seven years. But things don't last forever. But the great thing about film and television is that they do last forever. <laughs> and you can watch it <laughs> over, know, and over, and over, over and over and over and over, and over again. again and have that experience whenever you want it. And they lived happily ever after. And they lived happily ever after. And they lived happily ever after. And they lived happily, 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 happily ever after. Happily. 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 Happily.